If you're wondering why the colors in your videos just don't look as good as some of the other videos you see on YouTube, then the chances are you need some simple color grading. And that means you're also in the right place because we're about to give you the complete 101 on how to color correct your videos right now. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video. We release a ton of content to help you get better results with your videos faster. If you're new here, then make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. Colors are a huge deal in video. They're a big part of what grabs your audience's attention, reels them in, and gets them engaged with the whole experience. A flat color profile or something that's off in your color is incredibly distracting and it looks not good but there's actually professionals out there who just do color correction for big budget productions. Fortunately though, you don't need that for regular marketing or YouTube videos. And there's a few quick pointers you can use that will get you most of the results without much of the effort. In this video, we'll take a crash course on color correction for videos, covering the basics you need to know to pump up those colors and get your videos looking great fast. And if you're noticing issues with the colors in your video and you're wondering how you can prevent them, then stick around because after we're done, I'm gonna share the three camera settings that you can lock down while you're filming to fix most of your color issues before they even happen. So onto the color correction. Now in regards to the amount of tools or what tools you've actually got in your specific editing application, this is definitely going to differ. What you'll find in cheaper or low end editing software is gonna to be totally different to what you'll find in professional grade video editing software. So I'm gonna give you a quick run through on the tools to find and use in your editing application, whether you're on a cheaper or low end application and a professional application as well. So for the examples in this video, I'm gonna show you in ScreenFlow and I'm also gonna show you in Adobe Premiere Pro. So if you're not using one of those two programs, then you should still be able to get enough from this video to go and apply what you've learned to your editing software. Okay, so we're here in ScreenFlow and we've just got our video clip dropped down into our timeline here. So looking at our color correction tools, if we come over under the video tab here down to color controls, you've got a couple of really basic settings here, your saturation, your brightness, and your contrast. But what I would suggest is that you don't jump straight into these three. Go down to the video filters and hit the plus. And the one you should always start with, in my opinion, would be a color adjustment and start with the white point adjustment and hit add. Now what this will let you do is adjust essentially just your white balance. So if you press on the white, you get the color wheel that pops up and you can grab this markup in the middle. And when you click and drag on that, just move it around ever so slightly, you can adjust the colors to either add more green, add more red or pink to your shot to fix any mistakes that you might have had in your filming. So this is, again, subjective, personal preference. But you wanna move this around until your shot looks good or looks the way that you're after. So you might wanna add a bit more blue to make the shot a bit cooler or a bit more yellow to make the shot a bit warmer. So again, just really small movements here, but this should be the place that you start to get the colors looking the way that you want it. So we'll make it a bit warmer about there. And if we turn this on and off, you can see the difference. Okay, so we can close out of that one. And under video filters, what you've got in here as well, under color adjustments, is your exposure adjustment. This is where I'd suggest that you look at second. So add that down into your timeline. And again, a really touchy one, but as you move this up, you can brighten your shot. Really, really touchy. You don't wanna go that far. Or you can darken it down a little bit if it's too bright. So you can see that we're only talking increments of 0.1 to brighten it up just a little bit. Okay, so that was a before and after. Made it a little bit brighter there. And we've also adjusted our white point adjustment or our white balance. So once you've got your white point adjustment and your exposure adjustment sorted, you can also add in a gamma adjustment as well, which will allow you to really tweak the darker areas of your shot. So your exposure adjustment will brighten the shot up or darken the shot down as a whole, but the gamma will adjust the brights or the dark areas. So you can see we're brightening up just the lighter areas of the shot by lowering the gamma. And if we increase this, we're darkening the darker areas of the shots. So we can start to get a bit of contrast back in there now by increasing the gamma. Before, after, that's a subtle one. And the white point adjustment, just a different feel by adding more warmth 
to the shot. Now when that's done, we can come up here and start playing around. If you wanna boost the saturation, bring a bit more color into your shot, you can add that in here or take it away. So we started at 100, let's add a little bit more, maybe 107. And if you wanna make minor adjustments to the brightness or contrast from here, you can do that as well. Again, it's all just personal preference and going through and finding out what looks best for you. So I think that's a decent improvement in our shot from where we started. If I turn all these off now. So you can see how quickly with just a couple of really simple tools, we're able to totally change the look and feel of our video files in really basic editing software. All right, so here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro. We've got the same video clip drop down in our timeline here. And the effect that you wanna use in Adobe Premiere for your color correction is called Lumetri Color. Now you actually don't need to manually apply the Lumetri Color effect to your clips anymore. There's actually a panel at the top here. And when you start making changes, it will automatically apply the effect to your clips or whatever clip you're making adjustments to. So what we need to do then is to come over here to Lumetri Color and start making adjustments. Now you can see this is broken into tabs, basic color correction, creative, curves, color wheels, HSL secondary, and vignette. So there is a huge amount of control and advanced control for your color correction in here. Now we are not gonna run through everything advanced. This is a 101 color correction video. So the areas we're gonna focus on are the basic correction and the creative tabs. So where you should start, same as we did in ScreenFlow, is adjusting your white balance or correcting your white balance. So the first thing to do then is to grab the white balance selector, grab this here and then select something as close to white as you can in your scene. So we'll pick this white wall here in the background. And below that, we've got our two sliders for temperature and tint. So as we select this and slide it to the left, we're gonna add more blue. As we slide it back the other way to the right, we're going to add more yellow or orange to make the shot warmer. Again, personal preference, make this shot a bit warmer. Somewhere around there. And the tint slider below it, we can either add some more green or add some more pink. Now these are minor adjustments that you would make to fix any color cast from any lights in your scene or if your camera settings were way out. So move these around until your shot looks the way that you'd like. After you've got your white balance sorted or close, then you can jump down to your exposure. Again, this is the brightness of your shot. So as we increase it, it's gonna brighten the shot. As we lower it, it's gonna darken the shot. So again, we don't wanna make huge adjustments here. These are just minor adjustments. 0.2, so we've brightened that up a little bit. And after you're happy with that, then I would jump down to the shadows. Now in the shadows here, this is where we're going to be adjusting the dark areas or the shadows of our shot. So we can darken those down a bit here to make the shot a bit more contrasty. You can see as we go all the way down, it's a totally different look. So we probably won't go down that far, but we will go down just a bit here. So you can go up and down, move it around until you find that sweet spot that you're happy with. That's a technical term right there. Somewhere around there looks pretty good. Now, if you want further control or refinement from there, then you can either go back and start again and keep refining down your white balance, your exposure, or you can start playing with some of the other sliders here as well. Things like the highlights, the whites and the blacks. The blacks is one that we could darken down a little bit more. You can see it's a lot more of a slight adjustment here. So as I've kept saying in this video, it really is personal preference to get the look and feel that you're after. So you might wanna run through these a couple of times each and tweak them back and forth to really hone in that look. So once you're happy with that or you, you get pretty close with that, then you can jump down to the creative tab. And in here, you'll be able to adjust that look further. So the overall vibrance and saturation of your shot. So we might add a bit more color by boosting the vibrance. Now obviously you don't wanna to go too far here or you'll look like an Oompa Loompa. But let's just bring this back here. So zero is default. That looks really washed out now. Let's add a bit of color in here. So I look a bit more tanned. Somewhere around there is looking pretty good. Now, if you wanna do a before and after comparison, then come over here where it says Lumetri Color on our effect and hit the little FX. Now this will toggle the effect on and off. So this is how it was originally. And this is how it is now. So there's a huge difference between the two. Probably the last setting here that you might want to tweak with ever so slightly would be the sharpen. So if we 
take this all the way down, you'll see that we've softened our clip right down. And if we boost it all the way up, then we've added a heap of detail, it really sharpened it up. So you can almost see every grain of hair in my beard there. So you don't wanna to go too extreme with this, but depending on your shot, if you wanna have a bit more detail in it, then you could increase the sharpness here. All right, so that wraps up the 101 color correction in Adobe Premiere Pro, sticking with the basic color correction and the creative tabs. Now, obviously, as you can see, there is so many more settings and options and control that you have here in the rest of the Lumetri Color effect or plugin. So feel free to jump in and have a play around. But in order to get you started, stick to the basic correction tab and the creative tab, and you'll be able to get some amazing results. We're about to get to the part where I show you how to prevent most of your color issues up front with a few simple camera settings. But there's just one more critical thing to remember when you're color correcting your videos that I see a lot of people forget. Once you've finished color correcting your video, it's a great idea to test it on a couple of different devices. So if you've got a second computer or a second computer monitor, you can check the colors on, or even better, if you can check it on your mobile device. As most people these days consume content using their mobile device, if you can make sure that your videos look the way that you want to on your mobile devices or on an iPad or a tablet, then that is going to be ideal because it's a good representation of what the masses or a heap of people are going to be seeing your content looking like. So it's a good idea to test it on a couple of different devices wherever possible. The biggest reason you wanna do this is if you're editing on your desktop or laptop, then the screens can be totally different between makes and manufacturers. And also the different brightness and contrast and color settings that you can apply to each of them as well. In top level productions, this isn't a problem because they're using special monitors that are calibrated specifically for color grading. But obviously most of us here won't have access to monitors like that. So testing on a couple of different devices is a great place to start. So you've got the basics on how to color correct your videos. If you're keen to take things further, I'm gonna share with you a link to a great tutorial on some more advanced color correction techniques in just a minute. But first, let's take a look at those simple camera settings to prevent a lot of color issues altogether. So there's three settings that you can dial in and lock down on most cameras to help you get the best color while you're actually recording. The first one is your white balance. White balance is the setting in your camera that will let you adjust the color temperature of your shot. So you've normally got presets built into most cameras cameras out there for things like filming on a cloudy day, for filming outside in a sunny day, for filming indoors under incandescent lights or under tungsten lights as well. So you've normally got a heap of presets and then normally the best place to start. Now some more advanced cameras will actually let you dial in or manually adjust the color temperature itself so that you can choose yourself if you want it to be more warm or more cool to get the look that you're after. So I'd usually recommend to start with the presets and cycle through and find the one that either matches your shooting environment or the look that you're after. If you've got the advanced settings and you're not finding what you want in the presets, then feel free to jump in and tweak that to get the look that you're after. The second setting you'll wanna lock down is the picture profile. Now again, most cameras will have presets for these. There's normally things like a cinema profile, a portrait profile, a scenery profile, and some cameras will also give you access to what's called a log profile as well. So a log profile is where you're filming in a flat color profile. So on the camera itself, it doesn't look that good, but you do all the magic and all the color grading in your editing software to get the look that you're after. So in most cases, I would recommend if you're looking to dial everything in and get everything right in camera, that you look at the profiles first. Now as for a starting point or which one should you choose, I would suggest that you cycle through the presets, look at the cinema profiles, look at the standard profiles and the portrait profiles to see if one of those matches the look that you're after. If not, then use the standard profile or the neutral profile and then you can then make further tweaking to it in your editing later. The third setting you need to lock down in your cameras in order to get the best shot out of it is the exposure. Now this is going to be a little bit different depending on the camera or phone that you're using but the exposure is essentially the brightness so how bright or how dark your shot is and by kicking this out of auto and locking it down in a manual mode this will stop any adjustments for the light changing as things change in your scene. So if someone walked through your scene there's no chance that your shot is going to get brighter or darker based on that movement. 
So depending on the camera or phone that you're using, your exposure could just be one setting where you get to choose brighter or darker, or it could be broken down into three different settings, a combination of your ISO, your shutter speed, and your lens aperture. Now, if you're after a full explanation and walkthrough on those settings, then check out the video linked up in the cards now where we cover our best camera settings, whether you're on a DSLR point and shoot, mirrorless, or just your smartphone. So to quickly summarize that up, the three things that you need to lock down and set to get the best results in camera are your white balance, your picture profile or your video profile, and your camera exposure or brightness. Now, if you're looking for some more advanced color correction techniques, then check out the video linked on screen now and you'll get exactly that. I'll see you soon.